Good morning, everyone. So it is good to see everyone here this morning. Uh, this morning's service, actually, I'm going to split this sermon in two. I, I got started working on it, and I've got enough for about three hours. I'm sure you don't want to hear that this morning. So we're going to do half this morning and half this evening, if you want to come back this evening for the second half of it. But uh, I want to talk this morning about faith. Faith. And I'm going to begin in Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, faith is a subject that sometimes people get a little bit confused on, especially when they uh, look at it in context of James chapter 2, which is a very famous uh, place where people like to go to to talk about work salvation. We're going to take a look at that tonight, James chapter 2. But I want to take a look at, the, uh, at faith this morning, uh, something that you know, we, we have to have in order to be saved. Hebrews chapter 11 is where we'll begin. We'll be turning to several verses all in the New Testament this morning as we take a look at this subject. But Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for your many blessings to us. Thank you for your word, Lord, and I help, pray that you will help us, Lord, as we take a look at the subject of faith this morning, Lord. I pray that you will help us maybe to learn something about it that we didn't know before we came in. Lord, I pray that, as, as always, you will help me to get out of the way, and your words will come through clearly and easily understood this morning. Lord, I pray if there is anyone here that doesn't know you, Lord, that has not called upon the name of the Lord to be saved, I pray that this morning is the morning that they will do that before it's too late. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we see here in Hebrews chapter 11, and Hebrews chapter 11 is called the faith chapter. But Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So we have a good definition right here of what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And he gives an example here, actually, Paul does. You know, by faith, we understand that the world was created in six days by the spoken word of God. Now look, everybody, when, when it comes to, to figuring out how this earth was made, how this earth was formed, you know, how this world began, everybody has to use faith to get to that point. You know, I've told this story often, and I'll tell it again this morning. Uh, many years ago, my wife and I took our kids up to Washington, D.C. Uh, to take a look at the Smithsonian's and all those kinds of places, you know, the, the Smithsonian... Uh, Museums, and we went and looked at a museum uh, of natural history. You know, and we're there, and you know, we're looking at this, uh, you know, this dinosaur, and we're looking at the little plate that's on the dinosaur. You know, tells all about it and everything. And an older lady came up to me. She worked at the Smithsonian, and she came up to us and she started to tell us about this dinosaur. You know, millions and millions of years ago, and all sorts of you know, just hard to believe kinds of things. Look, she had to have faith to tell us that story. It is faith in what she believes. And she chooses to believe man's version of the story. But she has faith that that happened because she wasn't there. You know, and we were not there at the founding of the world either. I choose to have faith in the word of God. How do I know that the world was created in six days? Very easily. The Bible tells me it was. Well, how do you know the Bible's true? Because I have faith. This is the way it works. I haven't seen it, but I believe in it. I have faith in it. And so that's how faith works. And so by this same token, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, you don't have to turn there, I'm just going to read this very famous passage. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We have to have faith to be saved. We have to have faith that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he was, uh, died on the cross, was buried, rose again the third day, that he was, lived a perfect, sinless life, fully God, fully man, 
you know, on this earth, and he died to save us from our sins. You have to have faith that that happened in order to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to say, yes, I believe that. You know, faith, for, you know, a, a simple example of faith, you know, let's say that I was going to meet somebody somewhere, and uh, they had never, uh, you know, somebody I'd never, never seen before, and we're going to meet in a parking lot somewhere. All right, and then so, so I tell them, well, you know, what you need to look for in that parking lot is a blue Toyota, uh, you know, SUV. They'll say, okay. So, you know, they have to have faith then that that's what I'm going to be driving in because I've told them they haven't seen it. But now all of you guys know that I drive a blue Toyota SUV. So if I tell you that I drive one, it's no problem. You've seen it, you believe. So faith has to do with not seeing. Okay, 2 Corinthians, actually, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm just going to read this to you as well uh, for sake of time. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul wrote in verses 6, 7, and 8, Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So we walk by faith, not sight, meaning that those two are opposite things. If we walk by sight, we wouldn't need faith. Now let's continue in Hebrews chapter 11, and I just want to point out a few things in Hebrews chapter 11. We're not going to cover the whole chapter here because I want to cover a couple other things as it pertains to faith this morning. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because you have to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ in order to believe in him. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. It's never of works. And so that's why, you know, this, this evening we're going to take a deeper look at James chapter 2 where it says that a man is justified, uh, his faith is justified by his works. And a lot of people wonder about that. Well, that's something that we'll, we'll take a look at then. So it says here, and... and Something else that comes up in 2 Corinthians that comes up in a lot of places when we're talking about faith is the word confidence. You know, if you have faith in something, you have confidence that it's going to happen, even though you haven't seen it. Now, I want to show you what faith can do. If we continue on, and this is the faith chapter, so we have a lot of examples of very prominent people in the Bible. Abraham, Moses, uh, you know, Abel, Enoch, you know, all these people, we have examples but take a look at what faith can do if you go down to verse 32 of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and David also and Samson and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, and out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourging, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. So we have all these people before Jesus Christ that had faith, that believed that Jesus Christ was going to come and die on the cross. Because... In the Old Testament and the New Testament, you're saved the same way, by calling upon the name of the Lord. The only difference is in the Old Testament, they didn't know the name of the Lord, Jesus. In the New Testament, now we do. That's why when we call upon the name of the Lord, we call upon Jesus. But they're able to do all sorts of things, alter kingdoms. You know, they're able to go through tortures that normal people would never be able to go through because of their faith. Because in many of these times with these martyrs who had to go through all these horrible tortures, if they had only renounced their faith, they wouldn't have had to go through these things. And I sometimes look at these stories of martyrs and people who died for their faith, 
what strong faith that they had. You know, you're having to go through all of these pain and torture and everything, but you have faith in the promise that what is after this life is much better than what is here. And if you renounce that here on this earth, you know, then you didn't have the faith to begin with. So let's take a look at, sometimes people don't understand a little bit about faith. Number one, there are quantities of faith. Some people out here in, in this audience right now, everybody out here probably has a different amount of faith than someone else. Some people out here in this audience right now have a lot of faith. Some people don't have as much faith. There are Christians right now all across the United States of America that slept in this morning, that don't go to church, that don't do all those things, but they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, so the Bible says that they are saved. Their faith is very small. I want to show you some of the ways of quantities of faith, how, how little some folks had, how a lot some folks had, what the difference is, and how you can increase your faith. Let's take a look in the book of Matthew for this. Matthew chapter 6. Actually, let's go to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. The Bible speaks so much about faith, and there's just no way, you know, that it can all be covered this morning. But, uh, you know, we're going to take a look at it again, some this morning, some this evening. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 25. Matthew chapter 8, verse 25 and 26. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Turn with me over to um, Matthew chapter 16. Just a few more pages. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, beginning in verse 5. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he saith unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up. Neither the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many baskets you took up. How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? So in two places here, we see Jesus getting on to people for having little faith. And the funny thing about it is these are his disciples. You know, in the first place in Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 8, there's a big storm. You know, and, and the disciples are scared to death. And they wake up Jesus and said, do something or else we're going to perish. And so Jesus gets up and says, oh, ye of little faith. Look, he said, look, <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm right here. I am, you know, I am the son of God. You know that. Why are you so scared? Why do you have no faith that I can take care of you? And then in Matthew chapter 16, the disciples, you know, of course, they're thinking with their bellies. They're hungry. And, you know, he tells them to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Beware of their, and he, their, you know, bread is all that's on their mind. They're thinking, well, he's telling us this because we didn't bring any bread. He said, oh, you have little faith. I've fed thousands of people with five loaves and two fishes with stuff left over. He said, how is it that you don't have any faith that you're not going to go hungry? How's that you don't have any faith that I'm going to take care of you? Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, the Sermon on the Mount. Let's go back to that. I want to read that as well. Matthew chapter 6. Because there are a lot of Christians today that are like these disciples, that have little faith. You know, they think, oh, well, and, and look, I've seen them. I've seen it recently. You know, people will get, start to get right with God and start going back to church on Sunday mornings, 
You know, and then something bad happens to them. They lose their job or, you know, they've got family problems. And they say, God, I don't understand. I've been trying to get right with you again. I've been going to church every Sunday morning. I've given you an hour a week. What more do you want? You know, they have little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. Matthew chapter 6. Uh, let's see. Matthew chapter 6. Let me find it here because I kind of went out of turn. here. Matthew chapter 6, verse 27. Jesus, of course, this is the Sermon on the Mount. The famous Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 6, verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? We as Christians spend so much time worrying about our bills, about our health, about the problems that we have. You know, some Christians worry about being short. So, you know, apparently, so, right? But not, not Miss Willie Mae, though. She's not worried about, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't help. <laughs> Anyways, you know, she, I, I, I can pick on her because I know her very well. But, you know, like, he says, don't worry. I'm going to take care of you. you know, no matter what, oh, ye of little faith. So he's all the time getting on, Jesus is all the time getting on people for having little faith. I want to show you a time where he was amazed by someone who had a lot of faith. And this is not one of his disciples. Turn with me to the book of Luke. The book of Luke, uh, chapter 7. The book of Luke, chapter 7. Let's begin in verse 1 to get the whole story here. Luke chapter 7, verse 1. Now when he, and this is being Jesus, now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. When Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter into my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned about him, and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole, that had been sick. Now I want to take a look at this story just a little bit because this is going to tie up the end of my sermon here as far as how you get faith. Because a lot of us have little faith. But there are some people here sitting here that I know personally that have a lot of faith. And you can just take a look at them and tell. How can you tell? Let me show you right now. We have this centurion who has a servant that's very sick. This centurion asked the el Jew el Jewish elders if they would ask Jesus to heal his servant. So, the elders go to Jesus, and they say, there's a centurion, and his servant's very sick. We would like to know if you would go and heal this guy. They said, look, and, and they tell him, this centurion is a wonderful man. He's a very nice person. He's built a synagogue for us. He loves our nation. He is very worthy of having this done. That's what everybody else around the centurion says. You know, if you take a look at 7 uh, verse, uh, verse 4, the, back of, the end of verse 4, the elders are telling him that he was worthy for whom he should do this. If anyone deserves their servant to be healed, 
It's this centurion. He's a good man, Jesus. He takes care of all kinds of stuff. You know, he helps our nation out. The reason I want to point that out, that they say he is worthy because as Jesus has said, yeah, I'll go do this, the centurion, who has never seen Jesus, sends a servant to Jesus and says, don't trouble yourself with coming to my house. I am not worthy of even being under the same roof with you. That's what the centurion says. We just got done. The Jews just got done setting him up saying, look, this guy, if anybody's worthy, it's him. But the centurion himself says this, I'm not worthy for you to be even in the same roof, under the same roof. And I know, he said, look, Jesus, he, he says, you know, I have soldiers under me. And I know when I give them a command, it is done. So I know that all you have to do is speak and my servant will be healed because he recognizes who Jesus is without even seeing him. Jesus is God. And the whole world is under him. And all he has to do is command the sickness. And the centurion knows it's going to go. That's faith. The disciples had little faith. And they, Jesus was right there with them. Standing right there with them. And they had little faith in what he could do. The centurion said, I'm not worthy to be in the same house with him. All I know that I know that all you have to do is speak. And my servant can be healed. He had that much confidence in Jesus, that much faith. And that's why he had great faith, even though everybody else said, oh, wow, look how worthy he is. And I want to, I want to, I want to hit this point because I'm going to close with this. Look how worthy he is. Look at how great this guy is. But the guy himself said, I'm not worthy. Not, not at all. This ties in, and it's amazing how consistent the Bible is, because go with me to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Because we would all like to have our faith increased. Everyone here, I'm sure, would like more faith, not less. How do you get more faith? The question is asked right here in Luke chapter 17. The disciples who are struggling with faith, they have little faith. They ask Jesus a question in Luke chapter 17, verse 5. Luke chapter 17, verse 5. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And so he tells them the story. Verse 6. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it, shall, and it should obey you. He said, oh, that's, you know, if you just had that little bit of faith. And those people that we read about in Hebrews 11 had more faith than a grain of mustard seed. I mean, they're altering kingdoms. They're doing all sorts of things. You know, they, and they are setting up an example for us of strong faith through what they had to go through. The people that are named and the people who are not named. But he said, you know, if you even had the faith of the grain of mustard seed, you could pull up a sycamore tree by its roots throw it in the ocean. But he says, here's how you get more faith. And he tells a story. And a lot of people don't pick up on this as being part of the story here. Verse 7. But which of you having a servant, plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet? And will not rather say unto him, make ready, wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink? Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that, which was our duty to do. So he says, you want to increase your faith? Here's how you increase your faith. Because he says a lot, and by the way, a lot of Christians today, they do things, they, they want credit for it. Look, I, I, you know, we may just go just a, a touch long here this morning, but I can remember, I, I have all kinds of stories, you know, personal stories about this kind of thing. You know, people doing things. You know, I, I can remember one year, many years ago for Christmas. Okay, you know, we, Tanya wanted the tree in a certain corner of, of the living room, and it was a mess. And so, you know, one Saturday, without her or anybody else knowing it, I got in that corner and I cleaned it up, man. You know, it is ready for a Christmas tree, right? I cleaned it up, and as soon as she came in, I said, hey, look at that corner. Look what I did. Isn't that an awesome corner? And the kids, they're back there laughing because, you know, I said, you know what, I'm going to name that the dad corner. I, I, 
you know, making fun. You know, I was kind of being uh, like a joke and a buffoon. I said, you know, I've never seen a corner cleaner than that one right there. That is awesome. But look, who cleaned the entire house? And never ask for any praise. Never ask for any, you know, wonderfulness or anything like that. That would have been my wife that made sure that everything else was clean. The toilet, the bathtub, the sink, the kitchen, the dishes, everything. But you know, I cleaned that one little corner and I thought, woohoo! Dad of the year right here! You know? All right. Way to go. You know? But look, I was singing praise for something that should, you know, I should have been doing anyways, obviously. Right? And 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 you know what what Jesus is telling them here and what the centurion got was look, you, yeah, nobody's worthy. You know, and if you do the commandments, if you go to church three times a week, or if you go to church, you know, whenever the doors are open, you're commanded to do that. Understand that, and don't toot your own horn. We have people in this church that serve God one hour a week, every week, Sunday morning. We have other people in this church that serve God every single day. And I'm telling you right now, I know who those people are. They are more faithful. You can tell. They don't do it for praise. They don't do it for glory. And they will tell you right now, I am unworthy. You know, I am just doing what God told me to do, but I know that all my works are filthy rags to him. I'm unworthy of what Jesus Christ did for me. Those people that have the strongest faith recognize the most that there is nothing that you can do to earn your salvation. You know, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You want to increase your faith? You want to get more faith? Go to church more, hear the word of God, read more, read the word of God. It's right there in that one verse. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you want the strong faith that some of the other folks around you have, that's what you need to do. And then when you go through troubles, when you have health problems, when you have family issues, when you have all these things, it's not going to bother you as much because your faith is strong in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what faith is. And the more you work for God, according to him right here, when the disciples ask him, increase our faith, the more you work for him, the more your faith will be increased. The stronger your faith will be. That's the way it works. And it kind of doesn't make any sense until you really stop and think about it. So if you want to have strong faith in the Lord, if you want to be confident, if you want to be bold in the Lord Jesus Christ, increase your faith. Do what you're supposed to do. Don't ask for glory. Recognize that you're an unprofitable servant. But just work. Just do what you're supposed to do. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for your many blessings to us. Lord, I thank you for your word and what it has to say. Help us, Lord, to study these subjects that sometimes, Lord, the world tries to turn around, tries to make contradictions about, tries to twist. Lord, help us to, to really get into understanding what these basic foundations are. Help us to understand what faith is. And Lord, as the disciples ask as well, Lord, increase our faith. Help us to understand what increasing our faith involves. Reading more, working more, doing more for you. Lord, if there's anyone here today that does not believe, Lord, that has never placed their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, but rather their faith is in other things, Lord, I pray that today is the day that they come to know you, calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved. In Jesus' name, amen.